In this video I will show you how you can determine the value of an electrical resistor in three different ways. And I will also show you which mistakes are often made in practice when you are measuring a resistor and how you can avoid them. And also how to use a so-called current voltage characteristic to determine the resistance value much more accurately. My name is Andreas from the Fearless Engineer and here we go. Now resistors are among the most frequently used components in all of electrical engineering. You can use them to, let's say, limit a current flow in a circuit. You can also split current or voltage in a controlled way using resistors. And you can also, for example, pull the input voltage on a chip to a desired level using a so-called pull-up or pull-down resistor. There are many more applications, but for most of them, what you need to do is you need to make sure that the actual component you want to put on your circuit board is as close as possible to its required theoretical value, which might not always be the case, either because of tolerance deviations or because a resistor has been sorted, simply sorted into the wrong box. And to make sure you always pick the right component from your box, you will now see three ways to determine resistor values one after the other. And the first is we will use the so-called color code on a resistor to determine its value. And then secondly, we will take a direct measurement using a single multimeter. And finally, with the third attempt, we are going to indirectly measure, measure resistance using two separate multimeters, one for current and the other one for voltage. So let's do it. Now, if you want to be quick and you don't have a multimeter at hand, you can determine the value of a resistor directly via its color code. And if you don't know what this is, color code, and how it works, you might want to watch my video on color codes first, which comes up now here above in the cards. Now, the basic idea of a color code is to code the components of the resistor value in an assortment of colored rings, which can easily be looked up in a resistor color table. And in addition to the actual resistor value, what you can find in the color code is, for example, the manufacturing to tolerance and also sometimes it's temperature coefficient, which also tells you how much the resistor changes its value with increasing temperatures caused by increasing current flow. Now these are resistors from a so-called E-series, which only occur in certain value gradations. And in case you're interested, this is also discussed in more detail in my video on color codes, which I mentioned before. And in order to determine the value of a resistor via its color code, you need to either a color table, which you can find, for example, on Google, or you can just get an electronics app for your smartphone or tablet, which is usually much faster than the manual way. And that's exactly what we want to do here as well. I mostly use the app called Electronic Toolbox for this purpose, which is available for both iOS and also Android and the link to this app can be found down below in the video description. And after starting the app, what you get is an overview by component category and in the top row you can see the resistor symbol. And when we select this symbol here, a screen pops up where you have to choose how many rings your resistor has, which in our case is four. And to make sure that you enter them in the correct order, the last ring on most resistors is a bit thicker and slightly apart from the others, but sometimes you have to look a little bit closer to actually see this. In our case, the golden ring is a little apart, so the order is red, red, black, gold. And if we enter this, the app shows us a value of 22 ohms with a 5% tolerance and the information that the resistor is from the E6 series. That means there are six value gradations per decade. Okay, let's do this again quickly with a second resistor. Here, the color code is brown, green, black, and gold. And if we enter this into the app, what we get is a value of 15 ohms, also from the E6 series with a 5% tolerance. Now this was the first and easiest way to determine a resistor value. And the nice thing about this is that you can do this even if a resistor is already built into a circuit. And this wouldn't be possible with a measurement, for example. And also with a good app, it's really fast. And in most cases, I do it exactly like the, like the way you saw it just now. Now the color code of a resistor will give you the theoretical value, but due to the manufacturing tolerance we already talked about, the real value will usually differ. And no normally that's not a bad thing to happen, but there are some cases where you need a very accurate resistor, for example, with a, let's say, 1% tolerance. But if you only have a series with 5% at home, then you won't get anywhere with a color code alone. And in such cases, only an actual measurement can help. And for this, we need a multimeter, um, something like this one here. This is a measuring de device with which different quantities can be measured. This one here is from the company Fluke, which can measure current and voltage and resistance, but also temperature and several more quantities. And usually Fluke devices are in the more expensive side of the spectrum, but you can also get a good multimeter for about 20 euros, which you can use for most hobby applications at home. And now let's take a look at how you can actually measure resistor values with this device here. Now first we turn the selector switch to omega, which stands for the electrical resistance, which we measure in ohm. And now you can see that the display initializes briefly and, briefly and then shows the value OL, and which stands for open load. And this means that the currently measured resistance is infinitely high, which makes sense in this situation because no resistor is connected yet. 
And next to the multimeter, there are three resistor strips from an E6 series with 5% tolerance each. And this means that all 10 resistors in each strip have the same value with a deviation of plus minus 5%. But please note that sometimes also higher deviations can occur in practice, which means that if possible, we should always measure the value of a resistor before we actually run current through it. And now we take the two measuring tips and we connect them to the first resistor in the lower strip. And the meter now briefly updates this display and then shows a value of 14.9 ohms. And if we now turn the strip around, we can see that it really is a 15 ohm series. And now we measure one of the resistors in the upper right strip in exactly the same way and we get a value of 22.1 ohms. And here it also happens that the value rises briefly when the contacts are removed and this is simply because the pressure on the connecting legs is lower than the contact when the contacts are lifted and therefore the contact area becomes a little smaller. And for this reason always apply a slight pressure to the measuring tips so that the contact is as stable as possible. And if we now turn the strip over we see that the value also indicates 22 ohms which is correct in this measurement here. In the next example we now measure a resistor which is connected to a circuit. The red and black wires are connected to a voltage source which is switched off at the moment and the question is can you measure the resistance just like before or are there perhaps problems with this particular setup here. Let's take a look at it. And first we measure the resistor right next to it which is currently not connected at all. And just like before we get a value of around 180 ohms which is also printed on the strip. But if we now measure the connected resistor we get a much lower value around 90 ohms which is only half as much. Now the reason why this measurement differs so much is due to the way a resistance measurement is performed within the multimeter. The resistance is not measured directly but rather calculated. The multimeter applies a small voltage to the resistor via the measuring tips and measures how much current actually flows through it. And the resistance value is then calculated internally using Ohm's law. And the problem here however is that the current from the multimeter does not only flow through the resistor but also through the connected voltage source via the connected wires. And although the voltage source is switched off at the moment, it still has a number of internal components and therefore an overall resistance which is now also measured by the multimeter here. And if we now remove one of the two connecting cables in our circuit and measure the resistance again, you can see that the value is now about 178 ohms, which is well within the tolerance of the series. So if you measure resistors directly, then always without a connected circuit. And if a resistor is soldered into a circuit board, then unfortunately nothing can help and you need to solder it out to measure it. And how this can be done, how soldering works, this is something we will have a look at in, a, in another video. And next I will show you how to measure resistance indirectly. And in practice this is done, for example, when you want to control the voltage or current range in which the resistor should be measured, which for example happens when you want to simulate its later operating conditions. And also this makes sense, for example, if a resistor does not always behave 100% ohmic which means that the current voltage characteristic which we will soon take a look at does not resemble a straight line and this is exactly what we want to do in the next experiment which is to vary the voltage over different ranges measuring the respective current and then also constructing a current voltage characteristic curve from the results to obtain an even better measurement of the resistor value. Now the first thing we want to do is set up the measurement circuit. On the left side you can see the voltage source where I can set which fixed voltage should be applied to the connectors. This is the upper number on the display so in the first experiment it's going to be 2 volts. And below you can see the maximum current at which the source should lock so as soon as more than one amp is flowing it will not increase current flow any further to protect the devices in the circuit. And as soon as we start the measurement the lower display will start to show the amount of current flowing through the resistor which means that we can use the source as a current meter at the same time which is a great relief because we don't need a third multimeter somewhere in the circuit. And two connecting cables you can see here lead directly to the resistor. And on the right side you can see a second multimeter with which we want to measure the voltage drop across the resistor. Now we could also just read off the voltage from the source but we have already seen in the video on how to construct a self-made resistor that there can be significant differences between the adjusted voltage at the source and the voltage at the resistor. And this is something to do with how the measuring devices are arranged in the circuit which means measuring either current correctly or voltage drop correctly. I'll make a detailed video about this in the future but for this video it's only important to know that with the setup you can see here the measurement error will be negligible. 
And the current, however, we can directly read off from the source display without causing any setup related inaccuracies here. And now we connect the meter directly to the resistor to be measured, first with a black test LED and then with the red one. And now we still have to connect the LEDs to the first resistor and the easiest way to do this is to use some alligator clips. And first on one side, then on the other. And the circuit is now closed and the measuring instrument is parallel to the resistor. And now we can start measuring current and voltage at the same time. For the first measurement we set the source to 2 volts and then we look at the current meter and we can see a value of 0.085 amps which is 85 milliamps for the 22 ohm resistor. And in the second measurement we set the source to 4 volts while measuring a current flow of 172 milliamps which is almost twice as much as with the first set. And for the third measurement we set the source to 8 volts and we get a current of 356 milliamps again twice as much as in the last measurement. And now we disconnect the 22 ohm resistor and connect the resistor from the 180 ohm strip to the propeller clips. And if we now run through the measurement series again once more exactly the same way, then we get a current of 11 milliamps for 2 volts of voltage, for 4 volts we get twice as much, so 22 milliamps, and for 8 volts the current doubles again and is finally at 44 milliamps. And now we have recorded a whole series of values and we can construct a current voltage characteristic from the measurements. That means a diagram in which the voltage is plotted on the x-axis and the current is plotted on the y-axis. And the idea here is to graphically describe the relationship between current and voltage for our two resistors. Now in the table here you will find the values from the first series of measurements with the voltage in the left column and the current in the middle column. And in the right column I have uh, computed the resistance for every single measurement using Ohm's law, which means resistance equals voltage divided by current. And you can see that we are close to what we already got out of the direct measurements here, which means a value little higher than the indicated 22 ohms. And the fact that three values fluctuate a little bit is within the normal measurement of the deviations you usually get with this kind of measurement. And if we now enter the three measurements into a current voltage diagram, you can see that they lie almost perfectly on a straight line. And this is exactly the definition of ohmic resistance, which is defined as a linear relationship between current and voltage. And in the video on the self-made resistor out of Play-Doh, if you remember it, we also plotted such a diagram like this one here. And there you could see that the relationship between current and voltage was anything but linear. And the resistance value can also be read very easily from this diagram here. It's exactly the slope of the straight line. So if we draw a gradient triangle for, for example, the first and the third measured value and calculate the difference between voltage and current, we can simply use Ohm's law to calculate the resistance by dividing the differences of the two measurements by each other. And when we do this, we get a value of 22.1 ohms. And you could get an even more accurate value if you fitted a straight line into the measuring points using the capabilities of Excel, for example. If we add the second resistor as a current voltage characteristic as well, you can see that the slope is much flatter than for the blue curve. And this means that there is much less current flowing for the same voltage level. And this is exactly the meaning of the curve slope, which describes the rate of change in Y when we change X. And this means, as a rule of thumb, so to say, that the flatter the gradient of a current voltage characteristic, the greater the resistance value. In this video we have looked at three ways to determine the value of a resistor. The first was via its color code, the second as a direct measurement and the third as an indirect measurement. And if it has to be done really quick and the tolerance is not so important for you, then in most cases the color code is the right choice. And if it has to be exact, you can measure the resistance directly with a multimeter and you, and you know immediately what the exact value is. And if you have the choice, you can simply pick the resistor from a series that is closest to the value you need and use this one for your circuit. But be careful if a resistor is already built into a circuit, then you have to remove it because otherwise the measurement would be useless for you. And as a third option, you can measure current and voltage using two multimeters at the same time and calculate the resistance value using Ohm's law. And this makes sense if you want to control the amount of current through the resistor manually, for example, to simulate the operating conditions. And as always, if you have any questions or requests for topics I should cover here, just drop me a comment and maybe I will make one of the next videos out of your suggestion. And if you liked this video here, consider subscribing to my channel, which really keeps me motivated to make more such videos in the future for you. And finally, here's one short tip for you. You can download all my materials like slides and circuit diagrams and simulation files, which I use in my videos, on my website at thefearlessengineer.com. Just have a look and the link is upcoming now in the banner here. So that's it for me from now. See you soon here on The Fearless Engineer.